And welcome to another edition of the Nerdy Agent Podcast. I'm your host, Luke Patterson, with my brothers and fellow nerds, Josh and AJ. Unfortunately, the Minnesota Timberwolves are no longer playing basketball, would be the update, because we were talking about how they were going to be in the NBA Finals by the next podcast, probably. I think there is no NBA Finals now. I'm People not ask watching me that. No, are you watching no. anymore? I think Luka, no. Dun- Luka Doncic complained too much, so they just canceled the they whole canceled. thing. They canceled. Yep. Yep. Seriously, I, I was like, when is the first game of the finals? And I thought, I don't know if I have the energy to watch any more basketball yeah. anymore. I put too much energy into how many games? Um, Four, 11. Thursday, I think. 16. Six, 16 games we watched. It was a stressful 16 <laughs> games. Four of them were not stressful. But um, today we're going to essentially just do a super quick update on the commission lawsuit stuff in case you haven't been reading the news, you haven't seen anything about it. So you have an idea on what to expect uh, moving forward here in the next few months and what's going to go into place. And then some interesting stuff on some articles we've read about um, some people across the country doing some stuff that's um, a little bit different to try and adjust to the changes that are going to be coming. So to start, um, I think AJ has the the dates and stuff as far as when stuff's going into place. Uh, yeah, so August 17th is NARS adoption date. I still can't figure out what that necessarily means because um, some uh, MLSs are not NAR associated or owned by NAR. Um, I believe ours is, so I think our date here in Minnesota is likely that it will all change by or on August 17th. That date's kind of bopped around. Um, you probably have seen the news that there's an MLS in Seattle that said, we're just not going to do any of this because we're not owned by NAR. So um, there's a lot of wild stuff going on. That can we'll you be? Get can into. you become unowned by NAR? Is that an option for an MLS? And be like, yeah, we'll just buy you out. I don't know what those agreements look like. They they feel like they're kind of like licensing type deals, right? Um, so I it, they've used the word owned before, but they've also used um, like associated. I want to say I've seen before, and some of them are like agent owned, which is that what the the N, NWMLS, I think, is. That's the one in Seattle that's saying, eh, we don't agree with you. We're going to post the commissions on here anyways. And what are the... So the, the big one is the posting of the commissions on the MLSs. And then the second one's the buy rep contracts in order to tour properties. Do these ones need to do do the buy rep contract still? Or no, because they're not NAR? Well, they've said um, they do it like we do out there, I'm pretty sure, based on research Currently, I've done, sure. which is... They have to have buyer rep to represent somebody. So like a lot of agents here, they get rep contracts signed before making offers. Um, I do not know if they're going to require that they have buyer reps signed prior to showing homes or if there's some other substantial benchmark that they have to hit before they would say like, well, now you're working with that person. You need to buy a rep contract. Maybe that's not the first showing, but maybe it's, you know, when you in, you know, in theory, you've decided you are working together, that would like be a threshold, you know, kind of like agency when you're required to provide agency. It's like after first substantive contact, Mm -hmm. maybe there's like another threshold that's like, you know, after uh, agreement on working together, you know, whatever that threshold is that they have to have it signed then. I don't really know what they're doing, but here, you know, um, we've obviously learned that we are going to have to have an agreement. I think we've talked about this on the podcast before. It is not a representation agreement is not what it says. Doesn't and that's been misconstrued. Be, doesn't have to be a representation doesn't agreement. Doesn't have to be. That's been misconstrued. Um, to show property, now to get paid as the buyer's agent, I would assume you would need a representation agreement. Again, we're not attorneys on here, so there's your disclaimer. But um, that's been Zillow's interpretation, obviously, that you just need an agreement that clearly spells out the compensation up to the amount that the agent could get as part of that agreement. And um, they have even included the services that you're going to provide. Also, has to have a start date and end date, be signed by everybody. Yada yada. Are the in Seattle? Are they a part of NAR? You think the agents, even if their MLS doesn't? Sorry, this is super off topic, but I'm just curious about this. Like, would is there any reason to be a part of NAR except for the fact that you're required to be a part of NAR to be a part of the local MLS? Um, well, you <laughs> That's can exactly why my question is you, it right. You, you can no longer call yourself a realtor. Um, if you're not part of NAR, that's a trademark they term. Because the term. Um, <laughs> have to so be a real would, estate agent now. Could I trademark you. any word? No, not any word. I'd have to make that word up. Petty Holmes. I could trademark that because yeah. nobody's... But I can't trademark the... No, no. No, that's I mean, probably already been trademarked. trademarked. Maybe, I don't know. <laughs> I wonder. Um, but yeah, I, I, don't, I don't know, I, I guess, wonder. specifically, if they're not a part of NAR, if all of those agents, by opting into that MLS, are now out of NAR 
um, and outside of the protection of NAR. I think the big thing that's been been pushed by the um, you know the the council that brought this lawsuit is if you opt out of this, now you're opening yourself up yeah, to our lawsuits, exactly. and we're just going to sue you to high heaven. So. Um, I think the legal challenges are probably what they're mostly concerned about, but they're, I mean, I've read some articles with their legal counsel saying, we don't feel like we're doing anything to harm consumers over here by doing it the way that we're doing it. So, and we believe in transparency of these commissions. So we're just going to post them. So it's, just, a, it's a bold play, right? Like, cause you think about like whoever the agent was that won the lawsuits, why would he not go to Seattle next? Right. The, the lawyer you mean? Yeah. It yes. just seems, or the, yeah, the, sorry, the, yeah, the lawyer. It just seems like an easy, like, okay, I guess I'll sue these guys now. Right. And so. that's and that's kind of been what's happening, right? Like, 95 was the first lawsuit that introduced by a rep. 2007, 2008 was the next lawsuit that forced agents to push the MLS onto the internet, as far as I understand. Um, and 2024, you know, so you've got... For 12. eight years, the agents decided they were they were trying not to have the MLS on the internet so that nobody would know what homes were for sale. So well, the only value the that we have is yeah. that we don't show people all of the available options, yeah. right? That's what they think. What they I mean, think. it's yeah, like that's crazy. crazy. That's not value, though. No, it's, no, it's clearly not. Keeping. And and that, you know, that's what I've referenced in the past as far as these lawsuits go is, like, you know, all the articles back then said commissions are going to go down 25, 50 percent. Mm-hmm. Because now agents aren't, the only value they had was they, they held all the listings and no one knew about them and now everybody's going to know about them. So the commissions are going to drop and go crazy and none of that ever happened. So now the same articles are coming out saying the same thing this time around. Um, and you're not wrong, Josh, like you're going to have another lawsuit in 10 to 12 to 15 years on something else. And it's going to change the way we do our business yeah, and then a, the lawyers are going to win. It's just, um, the one thing to be interesting is if like I said, this does change, right? It, it seems like for all intents and purposes, in August or September, we're going to have to live within this new environment, right? About commissions disappearing from public eye, from a transparency standpoint, and kind of sitting in some weird background place that we'll all try to figure out. Um, and we have some ideas for how we're figuring that out in the back end. But it's going to be interesting in like a year from now if there's going to be backlash to that. Because that's the only part of the new rules and regs that I feel like doesn't make sense is like you pull away transparency. I understand why they did it that way because they're trying to push this more buyers pay their own agent. So if buyers don't know what the commission rate is, then they have to imagine they're paying their own agent all the time. But I do feel like for everybody that's involved in the transaction, it doesn't actually help them, right? For the sellers, if they want to pay a buyer's agent, they're going to be worried that the buyer won't see it. Um, for a buyer, they're going to be worried that they don't know if they have to pay somebody or if they have to, if they don't have to pay somebody. And for an agent, they have to do a whole bunch of extra work to figure out the answers to these questions in the middle. So no one really benefits, it seems, unless somehow the benefit is like every house goes to buyer pays their own agent, every seller pays their own agent, and then it's just completely separated. But the the way it looks right now, at least within our local market, is that's probably not going to be the immediate outcome. So it's either going to be in the next year we shift to that outcome, or we have so much pushback on these rules and regs that someone does something about it to create more transparency again. So two pieces on that. So the 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 DOJ, and I'm, we're not at the table, obviously, but they commented finally on like May 20th, May 22nd, something like that. And their comment was, we would like there to not be offers of compensation, basically. Mm-hmm. And so I wonder if there was any conversation between the lawyers or the DOJ reached out to him and was like, hey, th- this is what, like, you should try and get this in there yep. where we remove the offers of compensation. Because if we are being truthful, how it is currently set up is also less transparent because I can see what the sellers are offering, but my buyers can't. Yeah, they can. It's on Redfin. It's on Zillow. It's not on Zillow. It's the buyer's it's, agent commission? I think, Zillow's, I think Zillow's publishing right I now. I think in some, in some, some places they are publishing it's it. It's not on the MLS. It's across the board. It's definitely on, MLS, on the MLS. On the MLS, they cannot see they it. They can't see it. And so it would be more transparent if everybody just got to see whatever that was. 100%. And then you got to offer whatever you wanted to offer, and then the free markets play out. But the DOJ did say that. So I think that's second, the, the latter thing you said there makes sense. It's, that's what they want to happen. Right, but in what six will months, happen, in six months when they start seeing how it plays out, mm-hmm. I do anticipate there's going to be a change change one way or the other. For sure. This like middle ground that we're kind of sitting in right now, it's more of like a, it just feels like this is not going to be our reality for 10 years. Well, and that, and that brings up, I mean, well, A, Josh, you're correct. If you look at, and this is, I was trying to get in touch with a economist at the U of M, never responded to me. I might just call one of them and ask them about their game theory experience when stuff like this happens. But typically from what I've seen, 
when regulation gets introduced, unless it's so staggering that it is required to have an immediate ridiculous impact. Think like uh, like Trump's uh, tariffs on imports, right? Yeah, like right. that that will immediately impact the marketplace because all of a sudden it's just more expensive to get it from some other country it than it is here, and it and it impacted it. Yeah. But in this case, this is a this feels huge to agents, I think, but. It's a pretty small tweak to something that's been done the same way for 30 years. Yep. Um, that typically you're not just going to see all consumers now, and, and it's and it's consumers. The it, sellers will mind. make essentially the decision on this, and they, and the listing agents on the way they have yeah, conversations yeah, yeah. with them, right? So you're not likely in these scenarios to have this massive swing the other direction. Is kind of my thought. Now, could it swing some? Absolutely. Could it really change in the next decade? For sure, it could change a lot in the next decade as different things start to happen. If people start to see their incentives improve or their friends' incentives improved by doing it a certain way, you'll see some adoption of different ways of doing things. Well, and technology is going to change things in the next decade too. hundred percent. But like me and Luke were just talking and what's interesting to see is some MLSs and we'll see if ours does this. They're just now putting a new field. So they're like, they're removing the field of buyer's agent compensation on a house and they're adding in a field that says, is the seller offering concessions to the buyer Yes or no. And some of them are even going further to say up to how much concessions are the is the seller offering to the buyer, which to me is just like we all know what that actually means. Um, You know, the buyer, again, from the DOJ's perspective, that would introduce a savvy buyer to say, yeah, they're offering three. I want you to get two and I want to get one, which is, again, transparent and negotiable then from a buy side. Um, But if that ends up happening, I can sense that lots of buyer's agents are just going to call the buyer before the showing and say, hey, they're offering a concession of 2.5 or 3 or 2.2 or 2.7 or whatever that number is, right? And the agent is going to say, that's probably earmarked to, for paying my brokerage, right? Yep. And the buyer is going to go, okay. And then it's it's pretty much going to be Well, theoretically, like at that point, they already like have the a buyer rep contract that says you're paying me 2.7 anyways. That's the idea, right? Yeah. So I think if it comes out that way, they did they accomplished what they wanted to accomplish. The the actual lawsuit did. Because Transparency. It's, it's everybody knows what the seller is willing to pay up to. I already have an agreement with my agent about what they're going to get up to. If that dollar amount the seller is willing to give is higher than and it's not multiple offers, let's just say, then I'm going to get a little bit of spiff because my agent's only going to get two percent and they're offering three or whatever it is right so we're also in a unique um state and so our opinions are a little bit different because we look at our settlement statements and we already see listing brokerage buyers brokerage that actually like in missouri where it was set up i believe missouri was listing broker gets paid they take their money and pay the buyer's broker after closing. Correct. With I think with it, no comp disclosures, no nothing. nothing. Yeah. That that does solve the issue in a state like that because I mean that is in my opinion an issue. That's not how that should have been set up because the seller legitimately has no idea what the buy side is getting in that neither situation. Neither does the buyer. Neither does neither does the buyer, and they should. And so that does solve it in that case. The funny thing I have there is, is there not a loss, a screaming lawsuit in that situation? In five years going. You put that the seller was offering up to a concession, but then all the agents told their buyers that that was used for the broker compensation. Well, they would just do the same thing they did, which <laughs> is they would mean? they would survey a bunch of listings <laughs> yeah. and they would be like, okay, so that one was 2.5 and the agent made 2.5. That one was three and the agent made three. That one was two uh-huh. and the agent made two. And every one of them was exactly the percentage that was offered as yeah. concession. And they go, this is another antitrust violation. You know, so like you start to run into these sorts of problems. You could argue um, it up the hill. Well, yeah, and, and 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 the the regulation, like to, to Josh's point, it's always going to lead to additional ways of doing business and potentially more problems, right? So, well, and then you layer in the fact that we're in the election year right now, so the election this is being driven by one party that's currently in power, right? Not not driven by, but their DOJ is the one that's kind of running stuff right now. So if they win again, then theoretically. This could continue one way, but if they lost, then maybe the new party will put a new person in front of the DOJ and then who knows what's going to happen. Maybe they'll say, this is all stupid. We throw it all out. We start like, so there's a lot of different ways this can continue Mm -hmm. to play out. I think that's not to say, I'm not trying to minimize what's happening because I think it's important. And we've talked about this from the start. Like you have to understand what's going on so that you can adapt and you can survive and you can do it the way you're supposed to and not get yourself into trouble 
or not suddenly find, oh, shoot, I didn't sign a buyer up contract right away and I showed a house or I signed one that said zero and then they bought a house that had zero and now I get nothing. Like you need to understand this stuff and you know how to have these conversations and be communicative with your clients and transparent, et cetera. But that's not to say like any, all of this is immediately just set in stone going to be this way forever. Cause I think we're going to learn from for sure the first, what, four or five months and then figure it out from like, not to figure out from there, but there will be continued tweaking and adjustments that are made to try to get this to where it needs to be. So last thing I want to talk about then was we do have, I found an Inman article today, uh, someone, an agent, I believe starting a company that is not tethered to any MLSs that is going, the goal is to show the buyer broker compensation on it for a monthly recurring fee of $3.99. So they're going to do $3.99 like Supra to open the door and you can go to this website, you can log in. Didn't we talk about this in one of our meetings? We did. We weren't sure. I thought I had this idea. You did have this idea. This was why I wanted (laughs) to bring it up. I still, again, again, all of this guy's disclaimer, like we're not attorneys, but we, I read the agreement. Like I don't think that that's allowable, to be honest. It sounds really tight, but it does. But they're trying to, nonetheless. They're trying to do this. Yep. Um, And so, because Josh had the idea, (laughs) I think it's funny. It sounds like you would probably have a listing, and then as part of your process, you'd put it on the market. Then you'd go along your account. You maybe enter the address in the buyer broker comp, and then everybody can go in there and search the address before they show it. Um, If they don't get sued to high heaven, Zillow will buy them in two years. And we will. They don't. They will. They don't. They don't need to. They would just put it on their own website and say yeah, it's two ninety nine. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying. I mean, it's not a very proprietary allowable. idea, essentially. Well, no, there's nothing no. like special about it other than just no. getting adoption. Exactly. Whereas, like Supra, there was something special about that, actually. But I mean, you not like, really, like, to your point though, Josh. Well, like these larger companies, like Lockbox is still open. But yeah. if you're, but if like, but if it's you're electronic. There's if an you're, app. if you're Redfin or Zillow or yeah. Realtor.com, like. You would have thought if they thought that was allowed, they already no, would have done No, but Zillow this. can't do it because they're tethered. Oh, because they have the listings. Sure. Yeah, yeah. Right? That makes so sense. Like you're not showing They're an, I, they're an IDX, for, so it has to be manually Zillow imported. could start a new company called X, Xzillow. Or ZillowComp.com. ZillowComp.com. <laughs> um, and they could put it on that. Maybe. 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 I don't know. But if everyone area. gets it all, this other site, Zillow will buy it. And they'll. can they feed it from that site to Zillow then in that no, case? No, you can't because it's it has to tethered. stay separate. It's got to stay separate. So it's a separate log. Or it's, Zillow it's, leaves it's the What IDX I'll say feeds. is well, all, that's what we think. It all of that's separate. up in the air. Yeah, it is. we don't really right. know. So I just thought that was interesting. I thought Josh would like that. And if this person gets rich, I'll uh, yeah, I'll know where the idea started. <laughs> <laughs> you probably, we could probably had it you before sue, I did. You could sue him for... Uh, uh, what's There's a the, meeting recording. Our yeah, A-Bot. Uh, yeah. A-Bot. Yeah. Um, but no, that's, all we have, that's all we have this week on the Nerdy Agent Podcast. Keep and working as always, hard. And as always, keep working hard. Always work hard and be better. <laughs>